what is it? Is it a trend? Is it actually something useful? Is it just another title? Is it just buzzy? Is it just marketing BS? What's platform engineering? Hello, hello, my name is Michael Levan. And in this video, we're gonna talk about what platform engineering actually is. Now, why do we care? Why am I making this video? Why does it make sense? There's a lot of buzz. I, I mean, here's the thing in tech. There's always a lot of buzz, uh, especially in the past like five to six years, you know, there's a lot of marketing, there's a lot of this word, that word, this definition, that definition, and I don't exactly know who it helps, but definitely doesn't help the engineers building the products, uh, it doesn't help the engineers using the products, it doesn't help the engineers implementing the products, and therefore, it's not really helping anybody. So. What I want to do is I want to cut through the buzz, no marketing, no anything like that. And the reason why I wanted to create this video is because I'm seeing a lot of that for whatever reason. I mean, a lot of these DevOps is dead and, you know, memes of, you know, a platform engineer having a bunch of money in front of them and a DevOps engineer barely having any money in front of them, uh, which leads me to the point of like, you're not actually helping anybody, all right? So let's let's just dive into what platform engineering is actually supposed to be. Again, cut out the buzz, cut out the this, cut out the all the crap. Platform engineering is a couple of things. Number one, it is supposed to remove complexity for the people using the platform, not the platform engineers. Platform engineers still have a lot of complexity, don't worry. But for everybody using the platform, it's supposed to remove the complexity. Now, why? Because there are a lot of tools, there are a lot of vendors, there are a lot of workflows, there are a lot of capabilities, there are a lot of different ways that you can build your stack in today's world in your organization. Good and bad, you know, 10, 15 years ago, you maybe had one or two like enterprise solutions, you know, for, for particular areas. Now, with open source, with enterprise tooling, with various vendors, you got like 20 different things to choose from. I mean, look at the monitoring and observability space. There are a lot of tools to choose from there. Arguably all kind of doing the same thing more or less in different ways and stuff, of course. But at the end of the day, you know, the it, 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 it's still the same thing, right? And not to say that these vendors aren't doing good work because they are, but it's really, it, it's not about the tool. Like it's not about any tool being better or worse. I don't care about that. What I care about is the complexity. Like there's a lot of complexity around what to choose, not around the tech itself, but around, hey, uh, I'm new to this space. There are 20 tools, which one is better? Hey, uh, I've been in this space for a while, but all these vendors keep popping up and all these different tools keep popping up and I don't know what to choose. Or, hey, you gotta know this one, 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 you gotta know this one. A lot of, a lot of complexity from a standardization perspective, all right? So the whole idea with platform engineering is you build these tools and the, these products and stuff into your platform for others to use, okay? So that's number one. Number two, self-service capabilities. So again, thinking about, you know, you're a developer or an engineer, whoever interacting with a platform, how are you going to interact with it? Probably with some type of self-service capability, all right? It could be a GUI, it could be, you know, a, a CLI, it could be an API, whatever it is, there is some type of interaction that you are going to be utilizing, all right? So it really comes down to those two things, which kind of, overarch into this whole idea of remove as much complexity as possible. So how do we do this? What does it look like at a high level? How is this thing built? All right. And I have a lot of content out there. You can take a look at, I post on my LinkedIn all the time. I just put out a book, videos, blogs, et cetera, et cetera. Just go to my LinkedIn and you'll see a bunch of stuff and a bunch of links and yada, yada. All right. So it, because like this video, I can't get into building the stack and doing this and doing that, right? I just, I want to keep this video more of like a, what is this thing actually supposed to be? All right. So three levels, you have your underlying platform, you have your platform capabilities, and then you have your platform interface, all right? So, or your platform interaction, you can call it that as well. So your underlying platform, that could be 
Kubernetes, right? Could also be VMs, could also be bare metal, could also be AWS ECS, whatever your underlying platform is, it doesn't really matter. It seems like there's a lot being built uh, around, you know, the underlying platform being Kubernetes and for good reason, all right? Kubernetes, you can pretty much run anything at this point with kubevert, you can run VMs, crossplane, you can use it to deploy resources from Kubernetes that aren't Kubernetes resources, so like Azure VNets and S3 buckets and stuff like that. So there are a lot of these capabilities that are being built on top of into however you think about operators, extending the ability or extending the API rather uh, in Kubernetes, right? So Kubernetes is you know more or less becoming the underlying platform. Then you have the capabilities. What do you wanna do? Do you wanna use Argo CD? Do you wanna use a cost and resource optimization tool? Uh, you want to use cross plane, right? Like all these different things. Like, what do you want to do as the engineer, as the developer? If you, you know, walk into the phone store and you say, I want this phone over here. Same thing. What are the capabilities that you want? What tools do you want to be able to use? You don't need to know these tools inside and out because the whole point is for you not to have to, but you're like, Hey, listen, all of these data engineers are using this tool over here. Can I get this in my platform? Cool. Sounds good. So those are your platform capabilities, what the platform is actually capable of, all right? Next, on top, you have your platform interaction. And again, is that a GUI? So like an internal developer platform style GUI, uh, whether it's backstage or, you know, something else. Then you have your CLI, all right? And that could be, you know, literally a command line. So like you look at tools like Radius right now where uh, there's a CLI that you utilize to kick off the recipes, the platform engineer writes the recipes, you as the developer or the engineer using the platform use the CLI, right? But you could build your own, like you could go and you could build your own CLI that are making API calls to these platform capabilities, right? If you're using a GUI, you know, maybe you have some type of form that you're filling out, you wanna use this tool and you say, okay, I, wanna, I want it to be this name, uh, I want it to deploy this many resources and you click a button and boom, it's off and it's deployed, okay? So your interaction is how the developer or the engineer is using the platform. Now who builds that? Of course, the platform engineer. So the platform engineer is building the underlying platform building the platform capabilities into the platform and building the interaction, all right? So let's think about it like this. Let's, uh, let's give a scenario here, high level. So Kubernetes, it's on the underlying platform, all right? Platform capabilities, you wanna use Argo CD, all right? Then the platform interaction, you have a couple options. You can either use something like port or backstage or you know whatever you're comfortable with from a GUI perspective, to kick off Argo CD, right? So you can build a, or you can utilize the Argo CD plugin from Backstage. Port also has some capabilities where you can use, you know, a uh, a pipeline that you already built and kick it off via the the GUI, the port GUI. Or you can build your own CLI because you can hit Argo CD via an API. You can kick it off via some type of Kubernetes manifest. And then what you can do is that Kubernetes manifest is then kind of, well, rather the platform interaction. So like the CLI, for example, is talking to Argo CD and you know you give it a couple flags on the CLI and it kicks off Argo CD for you. So that's just an example, you know, um, but it, it can extend much, much further than that. And that's why this kind of video is so hard because unfortunately what's happening is the idea of platform interaction and the idea of IDPs or internal developer platforms, now it's becoming more and more and more. So yes, we do have to set standards. Uh, we do have to set application stacks. We do have to create these things to give all of you the ability to uh, use it properly. But think just, you know, again, at a high level, because platform engineering is still very much emerging. Uh, it's not new. It's just a, an emerging field right now. Uh, which is confusing because new typically means emerging and vice versa, but uh, it's more of the thing like platform engineering, the idea of it has been around for a while. It just hasn't really been fully defined. So just think about it like this, your underlying platform, however you're running your platform, platform capabilities, whatever tools you want to be able to use, Argo, Crossplane, et cetera. Platform interaction, how your developers and engineers are interacting with the platform. Is it a GUI? Is it a CLI? Is it an API? What is it? All right. So hopefully this helped kind of clear up a little bit of marketing jargon and the buzziness and this and that and the next thing. 
again, take a look at my content, see what I'm doing on LinkedIn, see what I'm pushing out, blogs, videos, books, talks, podcasts, all this stuff to get a solid idea of where platform engineering is going, what it's supposed to be. And I'll give it to you all from an engineering perspective. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate it. See you again next time.